Hello and a very warm welcome to this edition of CNBC Africa Special. My name is Steven Muvunyi. Now, youth unemployment, access to opportunities and financing are some of the things Rwanda's youth minister, Rosemary Mbabazi, is going to discuss in the following conversation. She also touched on the Youth Connect Africa Summit that Rwanda recently hosted. Minister, thank you very much for your time to speak to us. So, uh, 4,000 participants from uh, 91 countries. Of course, there's a lot uh, to remember in this particular um, edition of the Youth Connect Africa Summit. But what should be our main takeaways? Um, thank you very much for hosting us. Um, the major takeaways I could take from this discussion is the mainly the ownership of the development agenda by the young people. Uh, the second one is the partnership. We have seen partnership uh, from all stakeholders, from the UN family to, uh, to the governments, especially ministries of youth from different respective countries, from the civil society, from the private sector, from the media, and in particular from the young people themselves. So we have seen a partnership that you can build on as an ecosystem that can support young people all through. Uh, the other one is the excitement from the other p young people and solutions. I could see, um, I was amazed by a lot of innovations. In Youth Connect, what I've realized that normally young people complain, uh, talk about what is not going well, what is not applying. But in Youth Connect is where I've seen that the young people are only talking about solutions. Everyone sees that they have something to contribute to provide the solutions of the communities or challenges within the communities. So we are really happy about the increase of numbers of countries that have uh, joined Youth Connect. Those we are approved and welcomed in the, in the family. And those who are also uh, planning to implement and committed to implement and start Youth Connect programs. So by end of this year, we are likely to have 20 countries already on board. You talked about the, uh, replicating uh, some of the solutions to the youth problems on the continent, such as a lack of access to uh, capital, you know, uh, scarcity of opportunities and so forth. So could you take us through some of the initiatives that Rwanda came up with to solve some of these problems, some of those that you shared with other countries? Um, there are many things that we shared. Uh, first of all is providing platform for young people. Sometimes they just need a nod, they just need approval, they just need a pat at the back to say, that's great, you can do it. And that alone creates an attitude that I can do it. I'm the solution myself. So that one alone is a great uh, contribution to tell the young people, we are here for you. What is missing? What, is, what are you lacking? Uh, secondly is also um, the policy orientation and the government, the, the political will. There's a political will to support young people in our government, especially from our leadership. You could see our president personally being there for over five to six hours, uh, interacting with one young people. You could see the first lady being there for them. All ministers, whoever was requested here was invited and they came and shared and mentored. So you could see the, uh, the political will is there as well. The other one that we shared is that access to opportunities access to opportunities, especially information. Young people lack information. And that lack of information, they remain their own corner. So this is open up windows and making opportunities accessible, um, making accessible, available, and known. And uh, in Youth Connect, we also we connect young people, young entrepreneurs to opportunities, especially access to finance, like you mentioned. In Rwanda, we have Business Development Fund, a fund which is a guarantee fund which supports young people, women, and youth uh, to access uh, a bankable project to access finance, and the government becomes your guarantee and provides guarantees to 75%. So this is something also we shared as well, but also creating a like-minded people. And uh, this uh, has created a network of entrepreneurs, uh, about 622, who were supported through the program of Youth Connect and is so increasing the numbers. And those have managed to create 8,309 jobs. So it has shown and demonstrated that when there is a will, there is a way. When there is um, a like-minded people coming together, there is always a solution. When you create an ecosystem that is supporting young people, things happen. And you just provide an environment and the young people can do it. So it's trust. 
Minister, we do know that uh, the digital revolution has rendered some of the jobs obsolete and uh, this will continue to be uh, like that. Some of the jobs are going to be lost. So do you consider that when creating or when working on skills development for the youth? Yes, very much. We work with the Minister of Education. Uh, everything has a side effect, a positive and negative. But you always look, what, is, what do we want as a nation? And besides, we're not an island. This is where we're heading as a world. The world is going digital. The world, uh, if you look at even the future jobs, uh, the manual work will be out completely. And it has started doing that, phasing out in Rwanda. Uh, with tap and go, you've seen conductors already out of stock. <laughs> they are out of business. Because you're just tapping, you don't need someone to collect your money. Um, the tellers are going to be reducing in banks because uh, we are using ATM, we are using POSs, so the cashiers are not needed anymore. The, you can go on and on and on, the list can go on. And this means we also have to adapt our education system and uh, make it relevant to the future jobs that we're talking about. They are likely to be automation of services, as you see. There is going to be artificial intelligence that is going to do the job of human beings that you are doing. We need all this, but we need also to be knowing what do we do with this human resource that we have. Uh, orient them in other different skills, orient them in different programs that, they, that their skill will be needed for. So it's about planning, it's about strategically uh, thinking about how do you reorient your education system. And that's what we are doing in, as government of Rwanda. We are reforming the education sector, we are, we are encouraging more 60% of vocational training than general education because general education is likely to lose out completely. So 60%, 40%. 60% vocational training, hands-on training that makes it someone out of college, you just have something to do immediately. You have something to live on. In Kenya Rwanda, that's what we say, it's like the child of a, a vocational trainee can spend the whole day without food, but can, or is assured of dinner at least. So at least it's something that you are assured of. As something to do after college, you have something that you can start on working on with the skills that you have. So yes, we, we recognize the industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, and you're knowing about the, the automation of services. We're ahead, we are seeing where technology is taking us, and we plan accordingly. Now, in regards to uh, creation of opportunities for the youth, how do you create linkages between uh, the, ac the academic institutions and the labor market, as well as the, uh, for, for those, young entrepreneurs who already have ideas, who, have, who want to start but don't have capital, how do you link them with the venture capitalist? One of the forums are here, like this one where we bring, I think you saw one of the forum uh, where we had uh, uh, the first, the gorilla. It is bring young entrepreneurs to meet with the, uh, the venture capitalist. Uh, people want to invest in their good innovations. That is one of the forums. But also we have uh, many platforms, the incubation farms, in incubation uh, centers, where we want even to increase the incubation centers in the country so that we can train the young people. Some of them are good at their own business, maybe technical aspect, but they're not good at marketing. They're not good at business plan development. They're not good at legal and uh, regulatory frameworks to know that. They're not good at taxation. They're not good at negotiations. So you need to bring this kind of acts, um, support services that help these young people to know have it all because the future jobs will be fitting people who have who can adapt who have multi-sectoral uh, skills you don't have just to be a, a journalist you could be a photographer at the same time a journalist at the same time a marketer at the same you, you need someone with multi-sectoral skills so that you can fit in this competitive world so um uh, as the government, that's where we, we, we are putting on emphasis, especially linking up the young people with the industry. We have what we call skills council, where we bring the educationalists the in, and also the players, the industry, to know, uh, they want, we want also to influence the curriculum that we have. How do you, is what we're teaching what is needed, needed of the market? If it is not, what do you want to see? This is where we want to see more, to be where we used to work in silos, the government on the other side, which is training, the private sector on the other side, and then after production of this, they say, 
the labor force or the labor force you produce is not relevant to what we need. So that kind of mismatch is what we are working on as a government by reforming and having more competence-based curriculum. Before we put a close on this, I want to hear your opinion on what should be done to, um, to reduce the migration of uh, uh, Africans going to other parts of the world. Because according to some statistics, uh, African migration to Europe might uh, double in the next decade if nothing is done. And these migrants are economic mi migrants who this is driven by poverty and so, so what should be done? What should be done on one of the frameworks is Youth Connect. As Youth Connect, His Excellency said, uh, Youth Connect, to connect is huge. It go goes beyond yourself, goes to your community, your nation, and beyond the nation, and beyond the continent. So one of the, um, the platform that we have is Youth Connect, which connects young people to opportunities. If countries implement Youth Connect, it will create awareness of the existing opportunities in their own country. Because the first problem or challenge the young people have is information. What is available? Even within districts, you can find they know nothing about the opportunities that are there. The second one is uh, information. Information is power. Information is key. You can learn the information and make a business plan that can change your lifetime, change your experience for a lifetime. And so the Youth Connect component, the program that supports young entrepreneurs within their own communities so that they can empower the communities but also employ each other. So we see as this kind of partnership, it's this platform Youth Connect is integration actually. So if we provide all this information, this will, it's even sometimes perception of young people thinking uh, the, it's always greener on the other side. So they think maybe it's very good. But the time, the more we discuss here and they see young people in Youth Connect here, they are taking away 5,000 US dollars to go and expand their project. They will go work hard because they already have challenges in their communities. So this kind of um, working together, South-South cooperation between countries within Africa, working together, interacting, it will solve these challenges. I can see even development partners or where these migrants are migrating to, they also bring programs that are supporting them while at home so that they don't, they don't cross over and become a burden over the other side. So instead of supporting them the other side, there are many partners now we are seeing coming to support the youth in Africa where they are. So there's, it's also green where you are. <laughs> and lastly, we've just seen you awarding some of the youth here in different categories. So how impactful, how significant are those awards? Uh, honestly, uh, this program is very exciting. It is started in Rwanda as it is. We also award in Rwanda. We have seen this project are awarded on basis that they've been implemented. So they've been implemented. They have been implemented elsewhere. It has been in practice. It has impact already. So this is what we are awarding most. So we see in the future that we are likely to have more this network, they're going to call them fellowship, where they can mentor each other, visit each other. They don't have to come to Rwanda. It is from Burkina Faso and Dr. Congo or, or neighborhood or Mali and Mauritania. The neighborhood can be mentors of each other. So we want to create a network of young people with the same attitude, same understanding, closeness, within their proximity and support each other. Africa has a future. So they're the beacon of hope for us. Now, limited access to quality education and scarcity of employment opportunities are extremely big challenges for Africa's youth, and overcoming them will obviously require everyone's involvement, as Minister Mbabazi clearly explained. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to stay tuned for more conversations.